If the pressure in your water piping system is too high, it can cause all kinds of damage to your water heater and fixtures. A pressure reducing valve is used to restrict the pressure, but they do wear out. Stay tuned and I will show you how to replace a pressure reducing valve. According to code, the pressure in your water piping system should be 80 PSI or less. You can check the pressure by temporarily installing a gauge at your water heater drain or at one of your fixtures. To replace a pressure reducing valve, start by turning off the water to the building and opening a faucet to relieve the pressure inside the system. Once the pressure to the system is down, you can begin to remove the pressure reducing valve by loosening the union, which is a threaded fitting used to bring two pipes together. You can use a pipe wrench or crescent wrenches when you're replacing a pressure reducing valve. Make sure to have a bucket nearby so you can catch the water that will come out when you disconnect this pressure reducing valve. Then you can remove the pressure reducing valve from the existing pipe by unthreading it from the pipe. You want to be careful not to damage the pipe as you do this. Some pressure reducing valves have two unions, one on top and one on bottom, which makes it easier for replacement and you wouldn't have to do this step in that case. Before installing the new pressure reducing valve, you will want to prepare the threads on the pipe by adding pipe dope and Teflon tape to create a good seal. It is important to note that pressure reducing valves are a directional valve, so watch for the arrow that is on the valve and make sure that it is installed in the correct direction. Also, you will find it much easier to replace the pressure reducing valve if you will use the same brand and model as what is already existing in the building. This way you will not have to make any changes to the piping when you install the new valve. You can identify a pressure reducing valve brand and model by looking at the tag that is attached to the front of the valve. When you are ready to install the new valve, you can thread that onto the pipe. Make sure that you use several tools to tighten that into place so that you will not have any leaks. The unions on a pressure reducing valve are sealed using an o-ring or a gasket. You'll want to make sure that that is securely in place and that it is not pinched or damaged as you are tightening that in. Because the o-ring creates the seal, you will not need to use Teflon tape or pipe dope on that side of the pressure reducing valve. Make sure to tighten the union using a pipe wrench to compress the o-ring or gasket and ensure a good seal. Once the pressure reducing valve is installed, you may want to adjust the pressure. They normally come set to around 45 PSI, which is a little low for a system pressure. Turning the adjustment bolt counterclockwise will decrease the pressure, and turning it clockwise will increase the pressure to your system. You'll want to make sure to check your system pressure once you have made adjustments. Once you are done adjusting, make sure to tighten the nut that is behind the bolt that will keep it secured in place. Now you are ready to refill the system. Make sure to turn on the main valve slowly and allow the water to fill the system. You'll be able to hear as it's filling, there's kind of a hissing noise. Once it goes quiet, then it has filled and you can open the valve the rest of the way. You will of course want to make sure that there are not any leaks. Then you will want to verify the pressure of the system. You can make further adjustments using the pressure reducing valve even after you've turned the system on. If you put the gauge on a water heater drain valve, you want to make sure that that is not leaking before you're done. And I have found that it is a good idea to write the date and the system pressure right on the pressure reducing valve for future reference. Make sure to check out my other videos explaining pressure reducing valves. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.